I, first of all, I want to say thank you for tuning in to Word From Wise Bus Stories, Flowers From The Street, Flowers In The Street. Look, I messed it up. Bus Stories, Flowers In The Street. Thank you for watching. And uh, this is episode two. I like to call it the scary bag. <laughs> okay, I couldn't think of anything more creative. It just was a scary bag. Let me tell you how the morning started. Started like any other cold, rainy, wet Portland morning. You know, I had a whole bunch of uh, office people with their lattes looking at their laptops. And I had a whole bunch of high school students. You know, they had their electronic little earplugs in looking at their little videos or whatever. And I had a pretty good chair of service workers or day laborers, whatever you want to call people, labor workers, service workers. It was a nice mix, you know. Nice mixed crowd, and it was packed that morning, y'all. And the defroster was barely working, so my windows were, like, steamed along the edges. I was looking through, like, a hole to see. You know, I hate that standing room only. The only alternative is to turn the air on, then everybody complains because it's cold, driving. Could you please turn the heat on? I'm like, if I turn the heat on, then I'll, all the windows will be fogged up, and I won't be able to see. And those defrosters just don't work like they should. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is the bus was packed, standing room only. It was steamy. It was misty. I could barely see, let alone keep a track of what everybody brought. You know, it's hard to know. You got 60, 70, 80 people standing room only. Who brought this, that, and the other? So the morning, everybody gets out, you know, as normal. No, no negative events or anything. You know, I had my little snacks. I had my Monster Energy drink, my water, my coffee, because I worked 10-hour shifts back when I was working and when I was I'm retired now, but back when I was young and working, I worked 10, I liked 10 hour days. Just even though they were long days, you just get to 10 hours, which really felt like 12 because you got to get off at whatever time in the morning, say, let's say 7.30 a.m. And then you got to catch a bus to get back to your car and, and then get home and then catch another bus to bring your car to the garage or have somebody drive your car from the garage to, you know, it just it's always at least two hours commute time. So those 10 hour shifts, it's really 12, but you only get paid for 10, you know. So anyway, I get to the end of the line, right? And there's this big black travel bag. Well, I won't say like a tote bag, like the type of bag that somebody would carry. You know, I'm thinking maybe if this was hopefully a high school student that had their little gym clothes, their lunch and whatever, books or whatever in it, you know. But the, the thing about it is that all that month, actually like for the last six months, there had been uh, training classes that we had to take to make us aware of suspicious objects because we had a pipe bomb threat. We had a guy running around Portland wearing a hoodie, so you couldn't see his face really well. You know, it was always shaded on the camera. They showed us what they had, but his face was always shaded, and he was leaving pipe bombs on the bus. So I was more sensitive than normal. You know, my old me, without all the, the, the pipe bomb threat and, and all the training classes and stuff, I probably just would have grabbed the bag and opened it up and seen what it is and get ready to write a, a missing, uh, a, a lost item article tag or whatever. But the bag was is suspicious. Not because it was left, but because it was shoved way back under a seat and like wedged in between these bars. So I'm thinking about, wouldn't it be a trip if that was a bomb? So I pulled the bag out gently, you know, and then I recused myself and I said, no, let's go ahead and uh, I'm not going to open it up. I'm going to call a dispatch and let them know that I found a suspicious bag. And so I, I, I pulled the bag out and I called dispatch. I got off the bus and they told me they were going to send somebody out. And I waited and I waited at the end of the line. I'm smoking cigars, y'all. I'm nervous. I'm looking at this bag. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm probably like maybe 50, 100 feet from the, maybe about 50 feet from the bus when they come. So the guys come and they get all in the bus. And it, I guess they were like a, a bomb squad threat. I don't know, uh, the, 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 there was some police officers and company people too, like managers and supervisors and stuff. And so they got the bag and they pulled it out. And lo and behold, it turned out to be some gym clothes. But, you know, it was better safe than sorry. So that's not where the story ends. You would think that's where it ends, right? So I get the bus going back the other way. When I get to the other end, it's going to be the end of my morning shift. So I get the bus, it's all packed. I got more office people, got a few young people that's on the bus that's probably cutting school or, or they, they're seniors and juniors and they just go a little later. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt, you know. 
And so anyway, and then I had a, a few elderly people on the in, the in the front of my bus that was on their way to their appointments and shopping or whatever as well. So I get all of them off the bus. I'm talking about people with wheelchairs and everything. It's been a beautiful morning. People talking about life and talking about liberty and God and the news. And lo and behold, there's a message that comes over my bus uh, dispatch system. Every bus has like a, a BDS system. It's a bus dispatch system. It's a, virtually a, just a, basically it's just a computer in the bus. And the, over the message come over the computer that where I am, I don't know if I can say the name of it. I was at Gresham Transit Center in Portland, or in Oregon, Gresham, Oregon. And a message came over that there was a bomb scare. Someone left a bag, which was a pipe bomb, on the table inside of the driver's lounge. You have to have, now mind you, you have to have a key uh, to get in. Some of them, all you need is your, your employee badge and you swipe. But this one, you need your employee key to get in. So somebody either picked the lock and got in there or they had a key because they used to be an employee or they had access to an employee's key somehow. But anyway, there was a, a real bomb, a pipe bomb found that same morning at the end of the line. So that's something that you really don't hear about in the news much because if we, when I say we, I'm going to say transportation agencies, public bus transportation agencies and intra-city like Greyhound and Bolt Bus going from city to city, if those companies start telling people, you know, every time they had a bomb threat, a whole lot of people would probably stop riding the bus. It made me want to stop driving the bus. There were so many bomb threats, so many pipe bomb threats that, that weren't reported. So anyway, that was my first story. No big bam, no big boom, but just a story about a pipe bomb that I found but it wasn't a pipe bomb, but a pipe bomb was found later that day. So I was, I was, I didn't feel so bad about having all those people come out for nothing. It's like, Angie, you called us all out here for some gym clothes and a half eaten sandwich and, a, and, and some, and some notebooks and shit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Next time, once you open the bag first, you know, then, then I, that'll be the bomb, right? Well, I hope you thought my story was the bomb. If so, please subscribe now and tell a friend. More stories are coming. Some of them are going to be your average run-of-the-mill stories. And some of them are going to be, you know, stories on days. I mean, uh, stories of days that weren't so run-of-the-mill. I had really bad incidents. So, got a lot of kind of, and some weirdo crazy stories too. Just with the, you would believe what some people would do on the bus. I even had an incident one day where I had this girl that couldn't have been over a day over 14 standing on the poles. The bowls, the bus has poles bolted to the floor, right? Well, there was a pack of teenage boys in the back of the bus and she's back there and, and they got a little boom box going and she's back there dancing on the pole, y'all, like it ain't nothing, peeling off her clothes. I was like, we got to pull out, pull over. <laughs> this ain't no rolling strip club, you know what I mean? Somebody's child back there getting wild. So anyway, a lot of stories to tell y'all. Thank you for... For, uh, I'm, I'm from, I'm a, I grew up in the 70s, so I say tuning in, like you have to actually tune a dial. I had to catch myself. Thank you for choosing the channel. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one, y'all. Bye.